Hey. Wait, is that the goat that we got when we went to the old headquarters? Oh, it is. This is our collection of stuff. Wait. Are, uh, are the other things around the table? The holstered post. Uh, oh, that's the dagger we got from the religious ceremony. And there's his giant scissors. And then apparently there's a poem somewhere around here. A poem book? That is so cool. That is so cool that you can unlock these things. I'm guessing that is a pawn if you beat Lucian when we played him in chess. He kicked our ass, though, so I didn't unlock that. That's pretty cool. That's a sweet little touch. Let's see what we got going on. Results of the affair scandal. Let us find out. Was Livia, the secretary, actually a spy for Rumbag? Or was she just some dumb slut? Uh, several days had passed since I ordered the investigation into my secretary, Livia Suno. Both Peter and Livia had been acting unnaturally nice to me, believing I'd let them off the hook for their affair. They seemed to be avoiding each other in the hallways, though. I was just settling in behind my desk when Lucy had knocked on the door. They just don't know that there's a political cannon that's about to go off to wipe them out. Uh, sir, a moment of your time for you. And your gallant crew, I give you five moments. I'm going to motion for him to come in. I motion for him to come in. He sat and closed the door behind him. Our security team traveled to Lockhaven to speak to the owners of the pub Miss Suno named. They confirmed that one Livia Suno had worked there. Um, can you guarantee it's the same Livia Suno? Uh, their description of her did not match that of your secretary. Very interesting. However, it did match that of an unidentified corpse that washed up in Linkburg Bay two months before your inauguration. That means she probably is a spy, not the corpse. Oh shit, I could be like, if that was Livia who's working for me, nah. Oh shit. Shit. A further investigation by our operatives in Rumberg matched Ms. Suno's description to a woman named Ileana Vance, last seen graduated from the Crimson Political Sciences Institute. Our whistleblower from Rumberg recognized the name Vance as belonging to a deeply embedded covert agent, although he had previously assumed it was a man. I could say, how could we have all missed this? I might. I could say that lying two-faced succubus. I could say you should have. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give. I could say you should have figured this out long ago. I'm not gonna give Lucy and shit. He's the one who figured it out. I was suspect, but he figured it out. And I could say I should never have doubted you, but I didn't doubt him. That lying two-faced succubus. Uh, to be fair, Miss Sudo was just doing her job. Your vice president, on the other hand, her job of being a spy. We should execute her. Uh, but none of that can be helped now. Uh, the question, what are you going to do, sir? I'm going to have Peter castrated? Oh, that would be hilarious. I'm going to murder them both? Um, arrest her for espionage, of course. Uh, that would be standard procedure. However, if we do so, it's only a matter of time before the media pieces together what happened. I could say what if there is no trial? No. I'll look like a fool for having had her under my nose this entire time. Uh, that's why you must let Mr. Vector take the fall. Uh, I could say his actions are problematic. I could say his, his fault as much as mine. No, he hired her. It was his fault. Um, I'm not going to say, no, Peter did nothing wrong. He did something wrong. I'm not going to be like, I know you think he'd be a, he would be a better vice president. I know his actions were problematic. Uh, problematic is an understatement. Mr. Vecton put you in danger by failing to order a background check on your closest personal staff. He betrayed your confidence to a woman with whom he was committing adultery. Anton, would you do the same to your so-called best friend? No, I wouldn't have done that to Peter, number one. Number two, he threatened the entire nation. If we had not invested in a strong military, Rumberg would have known that we were weak and ready for the taking. I No, no, I wouldn't do that to my best friend. Lucian sighed. Uh, I am your chief strategist. I have advised you on what I believe is the best strategy. But of course, the ultimate decision is yours. All right. Uh, I have no problem with blaming Peter. He hired her. 
He didn't do the background check. He is partially responsible for this. In fact, he's largely responsible for this. He, you know? All right, Peter will be our scapegoat. But he's not really a scapegoat. It is his fault. A correct uh, to blame goat. Uh, very well. I shall write a statement for you to read at the press conference. I'll leave you to handle Miss Vance. You mean I gotta, like, strangle her to death or something? Uh, thank you, Lucian. Lucian nodded and walked out. I do have that, that, uh, that, uh, goat statue now. I could club her in the head if I need to. I called Carl Greaser from my desk and explained the situation. After a few minutes, I rang for Livia. She entered my office. Is there something you need, Mr. President? You tell me, Eliana. A barely perceptible flash of fear crossed her face. Olivia, sir. My name is Livia. Did you forget my name? I nodded towards the office doorway. Carl Gracia was standing there along with two of his guards, blocking the entrance. Alien fans, you're under arrest on suspicion of espionage. Please come with me. Her eyes darted around the room. Well, what the hell's going on, Mr. President? Have you let Lucian get into your head? I thought you were smarter than that. You're going to pay for your lies, Ileana. Carl's men grabbed her arms and began dragging her out. No, no, you can't do this to me. Apparently, we can do it to you, because it's happening. Peter, hearing her cries, rushed out of his office. Liv, what in the hell, Anton? What's going on? Uh, I could tell him. You know, I'm going to try and make her do it. Livia, tell Peter who you really are. Hmm. I won't say another word without a lawyer present. Well, we did fix a lot of the corruption in the legal system. So yes, you now have protections. You can thank me for that, Livia. I say as we arrest her. She looked Peter square in the eye. Except this, you're a sad old drunk in a lousy lay. Oh, burn, burn, burn. Shit. Honestly, if I were a Rumberg spy, I'd barely have to do a thing. You two have Sorlin ripe for the taking. Not actually, our military is in very good shape, and we have some strong allies. She straightened up, ran a hand through her curls, and allowed Carl to lead the way. Peter sank to the floor in front of me. It's not the way you want to find out, you're a lazy lay. Hey, Anton, what the hell happened? What happened? Come to my office, you're making a scene out here, numbnuts. Once Peter was in my office, I shut the door and explained everything Lucian had told me about Livia. And, and you believed him? Uh, well, better safe than sorry, especially after what she called me. That's your problem? After the way you fucked all this up, Peter? Your problem is somebody called you a lousy lay? Oh, man, I feel bad for your wife all the years she put up with your dipshittery. At least we finally have this ordeal behind us. Let's get on with running the country, shall we? Hey, I got a dagger or a sword around here. Y you ever fall on one, Pete? Uh, what do you mean? Um, you know, let's have a drink first, buddy old friend. Peter eagerly nodded, then thought better of it and shook his head. No, 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 my, my drunken idiocy got me into this mess in the first place. It's going to be a whole new me from now on, Anton, I promise. I watched him leave. A whole new vice president... I didn't have the heart to tell Peter how right he was. Wait, I wanted to tell him there. I wanted to tell him to his face. Oh, well. It was still pretty cool. Oh, no. National security breach? Order situations? National security breach. The breach of our nation's security has caused significant concern among the government and citizens alike. The scope and severity of the attack are yet to be determined, and the extent of the information leaked to foreign powers remains unknown. God damn it, Pete. Damn, you fuck shit up. What do we got? Press release? Oh, about the affair scandal? It was the morning of Livia's trial, and hordes of reporters were gathered in front of the state courthouse. Peter, Lucian, and I stood by the entrance. You know, Pete, this is almost kind of sad, because I think this is the last moment that the Three Musketeers are going to be here. Lucian had helped break the news of my secretary's arrest. Now the media was beginning to question exactly how a Rumberg agent had been able to infiltrate the Maroon Palace. It was time for me to deliver an explanation. 
A podium with a bank of microphones awaited us on the courthouse steps. Peter looked uncertain. I had told him I would be doing all the talking today. Uh, remember what we talked about, Mr. President? How could I forget? I was about to blame my best friend for a scandal that would otherwise shatter my administration. And Peter still had no idea. Together we stepped behind the podium. The reporters clustered around us and started shouting questions. Are you cool? Can you really water skate with one foot? <laughs> Um, I don't feel bad about this. After the way he fucked everything up and everyone, the only thing is I, I wish I could have told him to his face ahead of time. I wanted to tell him with a drink. I was trying to soften the blow. Um, thank you for coming, everybody. Pete's not going to be saying that to Livia anymore. <laughs> Probably never was true anyway, but... Um, l let's start with the top one. The bottom one... Bottom one, I could say, she's a spy. She's on trial. Let's let the judicial system do what it's doing. As you are aware, Livia Suno, former secretary to the president of Swordland, is currently being tried for espionage. I could blame Rumberg? Oh, I kind of want to. I could say this will never happen again. It won't in this way. Rest assured, the traitor shall be brought to justice. That's the only thing I know that we can do. She's in our hands. However, the fact remains that she should have never been allowed to infiltrate our administration in the first place. That she did can be directly traced to the carelessness of what one... No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally straight. We're gonna say a whole story. She did so by exploding the weakness of Vice President Peter Vector. And... Oh The journalist gasps and murmured. Peter turned to face me, his mouth hanging open. Maybe you shouldn't have fucked me, Peter. If you're gonna fuck me in the ass, the least you could have done is giving me a reach around. What goes around comes around. Mr. Vector's willingness to put his own infantile desires over swordless security has made him a threat to the state. Man, do I... I can give him up to be trialed for this. Or I can say he's gonna... You know what? No, I'm not protecting him. I want to protect him and just have him give his resignation. Therefore, the vice president shall be trialed for his shameful actions against the state. If found guilty, he will be imprisoned. Take him. If you have committed a crime, Peter, then you must pay. You've, you've threatened the security of the entire nation. Are we just a... I put my hand over his mic and gestured to Carl Gracer, who was waiting off stage. He and his men approached Peter. Hey, how could you do this to me? I know I screwed up an ant on prison. Uh, take that up with the law and the courts. The good news for you, Peter. The good news for you is the trial case backlog has been taken care of because of how good my administration is. And the courts are pretty fair. You just don't want to end up in front of the Supreme Court. You're welcome. You know what? I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of this shit. Stop acting like this whole chain of events wasn't your fault, Peter. I'm sick of your horse shit. I'm sick of your selfish horse shit. Hurting and screwing your wife over. Risking the welfare of our entire nation by leaking secrets, perhaps, to, to our biggest enemy. And just your selfishness to screw over the entire administration. Stop acting like this chain of events wasn't your fault. Carl and his men grabbed Peter's arms. Ah, fuck you, Anton. You hear me, fuck? The clamor of reporters drowned out his screams as he was led away. Yeah, go ahead. Say fuck you, Peter. Go ahead. You're showing who you are. You're showing exactly who you are, you selfish narcissist. Mr. President. Uh, yeah, I'll take a question, but only one. President Rain, were you implying that... Mr. Vectern and the covert agent posing as your secretary were engaged in intimate relations? Ah, uh, hey, I don't know if I meant to, but I guess I did. Yes, and you know what? It wasn't the only such affair. Fuck it. You know what? This should help Evelyn with her divorce. She should be able to get the kids. She, I think, Do they have kids? I don't think they have kids. Hopefully she gets that giant mansion he bought with crooked money. Let her get all of it. Fuck him. Uh, were you aware of those affairs while they were happening? Oh, ooh, I just had one question. I had my suspicions, I'll be honest. You know, Lucian interjected. Uh, the president will not be taking any further questions. Thank you. 
<laughs> Lucina's like, dude, shut the fuck up. I'm like, why not? It's not only open. Might as well, man. Come on. Evelyn deserves, Evelyn deserves to have the truth out there, right? There's going to be a divorce, and some people are going to blame her for it when it was not her fucking fault. Especially it's the 1950s. She's instigating it. Um, because, not because she's having a midlife crisis and wants to fuck around. Not because she was unfaithful. Not because she's ungrateful. It's because her husband was a treacherous, lecherous lout. The reporters reluctantly dispersed. Lucien and I looked at each other for a moment. Hey, Lucien, you want to go get a Coke or something? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Vector certainly made a scene, but it appears that you will make it out of this unscathed. I'm not super worried about that, but high five. <laughs> of course, now there's the matter of replacing your secretary and your vice president. Uh, you're a little too old to be my secretary, Lucian. <laughs> Very funny, sir. We walked back up the stairs to the courthouse to watch the rest of the trial. Shit, man. Our country's all Jerry Springer and shit. <laughs> Let's go look at the news. This has got to make the news. Rumberg infiltrated Maroon Palace. President's secretary arrested. Breaking news from the Maroon Palace. Presidential secretary Livia Suno has been revealed to be a spy from Rumberg. Yeah, yeah, we know. That ain't good. The president has taken swift, decisive action to remove her from her position and bring her to justice. What's the Swordland? I'm surprised the Radical doesn't have something to blame us. Swordland, today. VP Vector jailed along with Spy. A major shakeup in the Reign administration occurred as Vice President Peter Vector was dragged off to jail during the trial of Presidential Secretary Livia Suno for treason. The two were implicated in the leaking of state secrets to Rumberg. It may have been carrying on an illicit affair. Ooh. Although President Reign refused to confirm or deny this, I kind of confirmed it. The, their reporter must have left before I talked to the dumb reporter, because I pretty much confirmed it. We can only take Rain's word that the Maroon Palace is once more secure. From the Lockhaven Times, President's Secretary arrested for treason. Yep, and that, we already know all that. We, we had the um, press conference about that. What do we got going on in the Codex? Ooh, it's, it's got to be a, two things. One of them's got to be about Pete, right? Because Pete's no longer going to be the VP, or he's the VP in jail. Uh, it just says he was arrested. Um, it just talks about the details we saw. What is the other? Is the other about Livia? Yup. Alright, so her trial's currently going on. That's not a lot. I'd say it's not a lot. It actually was a lot. Man, what a crazy episode. We go from trying to get... A uh, constitutional deal to enfranchise everybody that fails to some Jerry Springer shit. What's next time? Selection of a new vice president and a briefing on the women's rights. Haven't we fixed the women's rights situation? What else do we have to do? I don't know. I'll do it if we need to. Either way, I'll look at that growth. Looks so beautiful. Now let's just get out of debt. Uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out, everybody.